What about my sweat equity? Yeah! Sweat equity. 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 Equity. Too many screens. Got too many screens. Uh, Eric's working uh-huh. on a skeleton crew of uh, of equipment as our internet's down. I'd like to say a big fuck you to Frontier. Frontier Good. Communications, where you get fucked in the asshole. <sighs> well, that's 50% of the internet options, dude, so don't piss them off too much. The illusion of choice. The illusion of choice. <laughs> hey, you can have this or you can have this, but guess what? We're a fucking utility. And Google Fiber's never coming here, and that was a pipe dream. Mm. And uh, Verizon sold off Frontier, I think, because they were going to be a monopoly. Um, because now Verizon, I know on the advertising front, they're going to control all the advertising inventory because they're the utility that gives you the internet. Cool. Think about that. Uh, That's I not good. Attention, actually. So uh, the internet, the cell phone providers, what they're doing, there's like four of them. Mm-hmm. Let's bring in our guest, Alex Opel. Hello. Opel. You got to get right in there, man. Abel. Yeah. Abel. Nope. Abel. All right. Whatever. Well, I've been told I was low energy last time, so I'm going to be like, mm. yeah. I'm going to give it some. Pick um. it up. You're Pick kind it. of a low energy guy. That's yeah. not a bad thing, Laid though. Yeah. It's ba- <laughs> <laughs> See, now, we, now, now we're not just running it with you and I. Without Eric, we got no. It's a leg thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you want <laughs> Shout out to God. General Manager Lou Brown. Wait, Wait, I, I, I want to hear this breakdown of the cell industry because I, I sold Verizon phones and Sprint phones for so, a number of years. Here's my thoughts on it. Okay. Uh, uh, if you watch John Oliver, he did a really great piece like two years ago about the consolidation. We're, we're in corporate consolidation everywhere, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you have a. I'm going to weave this into what we're promoting for you is Lunch Pool. Um, Eventually, lunch pool may have a part where it has to sell, right? Mm-hmm. Every business has an exit. So it's not, it's not that crazy that there is a lot of corporate consolidation the way things are going. Yeah. Because you can either fight it like Facebook and be your own thing forever and never sell, yeah. which is way harder. And you have to be very smart and get lobbyists and do all this stuff. Same with Google. But now they're the man. Mm-hmm. Now they're buying up. They're buying up Instagram, Snap, or not Snapchat, uh, well, oh, what's that? What's up? Yeah. Air fingering. It didn't help. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Facebook. What I'm saying is, and everything. Uh, what I get frustrated with is lack of competition as the end user. Yeah. We have this platform. What's really good is I called out uh, bizplans.com for not refunding my money. Mm. And I sent them. We use uh, Live Plan. So it's a competitor. Yeah. And I go, I'll send all our people over to Live Plan. Mm-hmm. And I said I sent this to them in their customer servers. And they're like, Oh, oh no, please don't. And I was like, Yeah. Did you send them the I, video, the pod? <laughs> yeah. Of course you did. That, yeah. That's I mean, not to make enemies on online either, but like uh HubSpot. I had a business before Lunch Pool and man, HubSpot, they used to be I used to think it was awesome. I used to think it was the best tool ever. Now it, they've for got those that don't know, it's an inbound marketing tool. It's kind of the it is the closest thing to your all-in-one kind of platform, yeah. but as we've talked about previously, there's no all-in-one. They don't there's exist. There's no all-in-one. Yeah. And so, but they, they brought in some equity investors, and then they were like, hey, you need to monetize everything. And so right. they bring you in. They're like, oh, it's this price. And then you, you're like, oh, but you want to do this? You want to set up meetings with people? That's going to be an extra $100 a month. I call it the cocaine tease. <laughs> Yo, you like this, Booger Sugar? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, you want to you wanna do some more blow? Yeah. Here's a, It's going to cost you a couple grand. And well, you're like. Mm-hmm. Hey man, I'm just in a bathroom with and, another and I, guy, and I respect that hustle. But for me, the worst just part in a bathroom <laughs> stall with another dude I don't know. Until you've never done cocaine, yeah. I've never done it. I've been trapped in the Good bathroom stall, yeah. like a baby. Do eater, it, like <laughs> do it, what, Paul. What are we doing in here? And he's like, let's you know do this. And I'm like, how did I get in here? Yeah. Uh, I was, uh, okay. was going to invite my mom to come on the show today. I'm kind of glad. I'm kind of glad. And oh, disappointed wait a minute. Hey, I, moms love us. I filter for moms. Okay. okay? I, we, we bring the penis talk way down. <laughs> Speaking of which, how's your penis? It's good. So I, I'm guessing what you're talking about is how I couldn't pee the other day. Oh yeah, that too. <laughs> I'd have back surgery. We ask all our guests. Yeah. <laughs> that's the go-to number. We don't one ask question. for their pronoun. We just go, "How's your penis?" Yeah. So I, <clears throat> I had to have back surgery. Got hit by a car. Was actually on my way to lunch with a friend. Got smacked by someone not paying attention, and. 
apparently <laughs> sorry every time you say you get hit by a car i think of it as comically like you have all these snickers and they just go oh, like the, de- the 80s like, like, like uh, <laughs> just stuffed body that always gets flown up <laughs> and their were, legs and arms were, all crazy yeah, there were visual wow. sound effects around like bam plow i just yeah. imagine a bunch of your uh your wares just everywhere yeah <laughs> so papers <laughs> fly up into the air <laughs> so but one of the side effects of surgery, uh, anesthesia, is that sometimes your body forgets certain functions. So they were like, the surgery went super well, and they're like, oh, you can leave as soon as you exit. Yeah. Pee. Yeah. And I didn't leave the hospital till 10 p.m. because I apparently forgot how to pee. Come on, just a few fucking drops. Come Pretty on, much. baby. That's a weird condition. It's a weird feeling. It's a weird feeling to have to pee and then not. Come on, bitch, do it. I don't want to talk about it on air, but uh, you I just did. Have, okay. Yeah, I, it's well, too late. I don't want to talk about. The details of a catheter, but well, good God. compare it to business, and then that's how we we mm-hmm. slip it in there, like yeah. a catheter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So sometimes you really want to make that sell, but you just can't. Okay. You, you try to you try oh. to force it, but you just can't. We so call it pushing rope. Yeah, yeah, it's the other way. So sometimes you bring in a consultant like uh, like Tokubaga. I'm yeah. Probably, mm-hmm. did I say it right. Yeah. 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 I finally said it right. That's the closest anybody's ever said. Nice. It. Yeah. And uh, they're like your catheter that help you. Get the urine out. Oh, they so desperately want. We'll put that on the website. <laughs> Five stars. We're like the catheter get that gets the urine out. Yeah, by the way, I forgot to hound your group to give us five stars on iTunes. If anybody's mm-hmm. listening out there, you want to hook up this podcast, the cheat code. We forget to promote this a lot. I'm going to whore myself out in June is the cheat code for a podcast to get there's 600,000 podcasts out yeah. there. How are we going to separate ourselves? We really want to be the business How many comedy podcast. I mean, we don't have that many reviews per. Our engagement's really low per how many listeners we have. It's really weird. Yeah. And so, I think people may listen and don't do that. We don't push anybody to. We don't have any call to action on the show. Mm. For, yeah. For our own good. I know. Note to self: call to actions are good. Yeah. They are good, even though even even if we bring it up very like even if I were telling the audience, there's a call to action, right? Yeah. We're not even trying to slip it in, like. You it's know. just that one last step that we're both just like, ah, we don't have to this time. Well, Coffee, do you have a coffee yeah. is for closers sound effect? No, that, but Ooh. I'll write it down. Coffee's for closers. You write it down. Write that down. <laughs> write that down for me. Uh, so my thing is like, if you listen to this podcast, there's two things you can do that's free to help us out. One is share it with a friend, someone that likes dick jokes and or business advice. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then two is. Um, Go on iTunes. You can literally pause, or you can do it while you're listening right now. You're probably driving. You're folding laundry. You're you know doing some menial tasks. Active listening, passive uh, activity. Mm-hmm. As uh, I've heard, podcasts are great for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, what I would say is, we need three things. It takes ninety seconds, maybe mm-hmm. not even that. iTunes five star review. Write one sentence. It could be like, "I hate these guys. They smell bad." We'll read it on air. Yeah. I mean, the five stars needs to be there, but you can five say stars, whatever you want. But we just need one sentence, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to go do it right now while we're talking. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, this will be a live how, how to do it. Because literally, there's some connection where you go from offline to online, it's really hard to get people to do something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Should be, we should say that it's the Apple Podcast app now. They're like almost getting rid of iTunes altogether. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. You need it, I'm on Amazon. You need it on Amazon? Are we on Amazon? Is there uh, an Amazon directory? Tell me where to go. Tell what me where Amazon? to go. Go to I. Wait, are you? You have a Samsung? No, it's an iPhone. Okay. okay. No, go to the uh, uh, podcast app. Yeah, Apple podcast, podcast app. Apple with the the white dick and it has the the things the rainbows around it. Everything's a That's dick. The app. Everything's a dick. Or Look a at that. Look at that thing. That's a like dick. lunch pool. It's a rainbow. While dick. I'm pulling this up, though, you guys know that the best way to get people to do things is a captive audience. So, like, just have a pizza party. And be like, hey, free pizza. And they'll be like, oh, by the way, you all have to. Well, we're, we'll have you on as many times as we can have you on while you're in town. I feel okay. like uh, you've got a lot of valuable knowledge. Plus, I really like what you're doing with Lunch Pool, where you're trying to end workplace depression, uh, eating at your desk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We just we just started a Facebook chat with my crew called the Burnout Brigade. So the World Health Organization just declared uh, burnout is actually a medical condition now. This is like uh, within the last couple of weeks. Huh. Like that, yeah. What's what? Did you uh, get any details? What? How does it qualify? Uh, you know, there's a video. Does my insurance not cover it? Yeah. The the video <laughs> probably diagnosed not. with terminal burnout. Previous existing condition. Well, yeah, I played a lot of Fortnite. But it's basically it's it's specifically related to work. So like they say that there's a big difference between burnout and depression because depression is like all encompassing in your life. Burnout is just specifically depression like symptoms related to work yeah 
I get it. I don't. I almost feel like I don't need an explanation. Burnout's yeah. a perfect word for it. Yeah. Yeah, but just, you get to a point. Just like I can't. Here, here's how big of a hater I am. Is you know, all right, we talk about this a lot. The people who are quote busy, mm-hmm. right? And you know they're not busy, mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're like, yeah. "Hey, I don't know if I can make that. I'm pretty busy." And you're like, "Bitch, I look. I don't need to see your eye cal, but I know you're not busy." Yeah, I will not tell somebody I can't do it. I'm busy. Yeah, I'll tell them I'm what I'm doing, or I just don't want to do it. I used to do the opposite. I would just sign up for everything and then flake out. But that's <laughs> the worst. So I uh, was, look at all this shit I'm, <laughs> I'm doing. I'm so busy. But no, I don't think that's. I do that online. So if you mm. say if I've done it, you have a Bill and Ted. Are you coming video. to that? Uh, I say I am. <laughs> <laughs> What's my invite I, say? But I know the the ripple effect online. So if I say I'm going, some people will see that and they might go. So here's here's why. Right? Yeah. So that, that's that. fine on a Facebook yeah. invite. But if it's like it, you know my kid's quinceanera and it's like you gotta go like, oh, there's yeah, an rsvp terrible. situation like my wife and kid are coming back from germany on thursday if i'm not there where's when the they get home, mm-hmm. that might <laughs> nine nine nine. Oh, <laughs> nine? <laughs> nine um so this is why you don't have reviews because i can't figure out how to give you a review so you need to go to the app i'm in the app all right. I'm in the thing. All right, so now click on the name of the podcast because that's it's not. Oh, that's like the most unobvious thing. Ever. It's you not scroll very, down. It's not very intuitive. Down. You can't even click the name of that the podcast. Give me it. Okay, here we go. This is like watching two grandpas mm-hmm. trying to figure this out. Give me, give me, give me. All right, so so it brings up the thumbnail. It brings up Eric and I's homoerotic uh, picture right, with just erotic thing. Maybe yep. I already reviewed it. You may have. Hold on. Maybe. And then let's go to settings. You guys can filibuster while I'm doing this. No, this is good. Yeah, this, let's this watch you tap away air. on that phone. Dead air. Are you nervous for your vasectomy? Uh, no, not when really. Is, when is that? Thursday. Ooh. You yeah, still I don't want to know what they do? <laughs> I still don't want to know? Um, here. Oh, oh God. Now we're oh listening boy. to our Inception. own podcast <laughs> oh boy. on the podcast. Here we go. So I clicked on one of the one of this show one of the uh, episodes. So to play, camera? five star we'll that shit. It. Write write one sentence and then subscribe. Those are the three things. Five star review. You Only gotta, one sentence. I can't write like a novel. You can. Uh, it's gonna be cool for the podcast episode we're doing right now. But yeah. uh, <laughs> he's writing War and Peace. I know. <laughs> Smack the phone out of his hand. But the so one sentence good. is important. So if you give a if you give a review, anytime someone. Here's what here's something I'll do. Here's what I'll do. If anybody listening to this has a business, a brand, or anything, you five star us. You take a screenshot of it. I'll five star whatever business, whatever you do. Your Google my so business. We, yeah, me too. Your Same Facebook these. page. So, so we don't we don't have any reviews on Lunchpool because it's an app concept. It's not an app yet. I would love a review. For we you. could do a trust. We can go through Trustpilot and figure out something on your site that you can have that they can review that's your own on your own site. I'm just saying I want. I'm holding you to it. I want to review okay. on my Facebook. Oh, okay. You'll get two for one. Right. That's yeah. what Eric and I are promising right nice. now. Yeah, two for one. Baby. We need to get look. There's n- people have a weird thing. I've had some clients that don't like. I I used to get everybody in this office building to try to review all of my clients just to give an instant boost, have a have a John Taffer effect. Yeah, you know, onto the, the consulting side of us. And I've had a couple of lawyers that didn't like it, and I get it because they're scared about the bar. One was just like, I don't like ethically like it, and I was like. He's like, you guys weren't clients. And I go, yeah, but Wait, you're a good I gotta, guy. I got to jump in real quick. Yeah. My mom just texted me and said, I did not get the live notice. Did I miss it? Uh, she, she's sitting there with her phone like, oh, can oh. I watch this now? Mama, no. uh, I'll bell. <laughs> sorry. Um, sorry for the previous sorry, 14 bell, minutes Mama. as well. Uh, so, what? Uh, and I, I get it. I, I kind of like that he was challenging that. But my, my retort to that is there's no, we're not going to take these reviews with us when we die, right? If yeah. you can game the system without being too crusty about it, I'm fine with it. I mean, it's really just a counter. You know, it's just like you just have to do it. You have a you have a dental practice with your wife, right? You have. But you, here, let me. There's no way you can open up nowadays without really focusing on reviews, no matter how you get. Let it. me challenge yeah. that though. All so, yours are, are clean, though. All yours are fine. Let yeah. me challenge that though. So, how do like NPR and all these other ones ha- like they have s- superb content? I'm not saying yours isn't. But like, how do they get to like billions of reviews? Do they think they're so they have a it? name when they start, yeah. right? So they have NPR backing up. Yeah. I mean, NPR is a huge entity. We technically pay for it as taxpayers, so mm. I'm glad it. I'm glad it leans so left. But uh, remember, I'm alt right, so I love mm-hmm. your hat. I know. Quit saying yeah. 
<laughs> Make lunch great again. I don't care. I I don't care if people think I'm alt right or liberal. Yeah, or for listeners anything. that aren't watching the video, I have a red hat on that. Ma- so the other day I did a presentation. This lady comes up to me. She's like, "You should have said that on stage because I couldn't read in the back of the room and I judged you immediately." God. Oh, and I, was yeah. like, well, I was like, "There's other speeches tonight about how you shouldn't have unconscious biases against people, <laughs> but we won't get into that, lady." Yeah. Oh, yeah. That that's a cool thing to say after too. Yeah. That's like stand up when people are like, "I didn't think you were very funny. I didn't think you were going to be funny, but you kind of turned me around." And you're like, "Thanks." <laughs> or the worst was what uh, when you shake hands with people after a show, mm. and there's a female comic or like, uh, no one says this to me because I'm a white male, but anybody. <laughs> Anybody in the lineup that's like gonna shake the hand of a free audience crowd mm-hmm. and flip the crowd? They got them. This is this is something I hear all the time. It's terrible. It's like I didn't think women are very funny, but you you're pretty good. I know. Oh, I don't think like, black guys are funny. <laughs> I've heard I've heard that with our friend friend of the program J B Ball. Yeah. So many times, it's unbelievable. Yeah. That's it, crazy. Not just from white people. It'd be like. Uh, Anybody that's not black, basically. Davey's going to be just fine, bridging the racial gap. Speaking of which, go on ComedyCentral.com. He's got a, uh, or CC.com. He's got, uh, with Preacher Lawson and Justin Lawson, two other comedian buddies, they have a Kobe, or I mean, a, uh, I just ruined LeBron versus Jordan yeah. sketch. It's got a million views already. Came wow. Out, yeah, it came was like out. 380 yesterday. Holy shit. Yeah, it came Good out a him, couple man. days ago. No, he, he's writing stuff for Comedy Central. Uh, when Eric and I go out to LA, hopefully we'll be able to weasel our way over to what they're doing. Get on the studio lots. <laughs> it's possible. All right, so uh, ending lunch, uh, that lunch depression, sitting at your desk. When you worked mm. at Snap On, I hated lunch. Did you? Were, I, but you were doing. What did you sales. hate about it though? So, were you doing well, calling? the thing I for my job with Snap On was not like going to an office and like meeting a bunch of people and I see the same people every day. I was going a different place every day, but there were times when it was like upper management and we would be doing meetings and shit. Yeah. yeah. And then it was like, okay, time to do lunch for an hour. Yeah. We've got these slides. Once we get through them, you can go home. But we're gonna sit and eat and make horrible jokes for an hour. Yep. And you're gonna sit there. And we're gonna ask you why you're not eating. It's worse than dad jokes. Well, see, we oh, it's we the worst. we like so my and advice PowerPoint to people, never works. By the no, way, no. And my advice to someone people fucks is up take, the PowerPoint. It's like take, video oh, conference. No. Take back the lunch break. So like, what I do is in any new job, I set aside an hour on my calendar so people won't book over it. Sometimes they still book over it, but then I'm like, oh, sorry, I can't come. I have another meeting, and then I just go to Jimmy John's <laughs> with friends because I mean, you legally are obligated. Forty five minutes. Take, yeah, like forty five minutes at yep. least. Yep, uh, I I read that stuff for fun. Yeah, the ADA, yeah. You know, thirty six inches. Can I can I read you guys my review before I post it? Yeah, okay. yeah. Let's juke the stats, guys. So good, background podcast of the century. That's my like title. Okay, these guys are exceptionally funny, exceptionally skilled, and probably the most fun lunch buddies someone could ask for. Mm. Practical business advice, phallic Back humor, door ad from <laughs> phallic humor. Yeah. And exciting business guests. And then it ends, let's lunch pool. Lunch pool's favor- <laughs> number one favorite pool. podcast <laughs> to listen to while we trim our nose hairs in the morning. Sweat Equity Podcast. Thank you. That's very nice Beautiful. of you to lie. I mean it. Uh, did you subscribe? Uh, maybe. That's the third part, baby. So rating, maybe. review. Subscribe. You're going to need this in a similar way when the app comes out at a broader scale. Ah, what's Jesus, going on? Yeah, let's Whoa, okay. turn off Pornhub. Oof. That is rule number one in this studio. That was you. Sweat Lodge Studio. Sweet Jesus. I, can't, I just don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to subscribe later. I'm okay. subscribe. Yeah, that'd be fine. Subscribe. He's a new dad. I did the trifecta. He's a new dad. Mm-hmm. That's what you do. You just did new dad stuff. Yeah, new dad stuff. Yeah, just like, oh, you never it. find the right button. You missed it last thing. week, uh, Eric. He let me eat on the air. It was no, I didn't. Beautiful. I'm sure he did not uh, let you, but I'm sure he, he didn't wanted to knock do it, it out of your hands. He wanted to do it for all the ASMR freaks out there. What was that? That's the people who are like, I. We don't have the mics for it. What the fuck you are talking it's a, about? It's, it's, a, a it's, the weird, it's the weird part of the internet. What does the ASMR stand for? Audio sensory something. <laughs> it's meditation for people technique. That they love meditation. hearing. They love hearing uh, people talk in a mic like this. It's uh, very crisp. Is it a sexual thing? Yes. There's a Super Bowl ad that was something like that. Uh, yeah. Zoe Kravitz, I think, did it. Eric's like, oh, this is disgusting. What is it called again? I need to go look this up later. Right. This will replace uh, the squirting videos on Pornhub, I'm pretty sure. Nothing replaces those. No, just R. Kelly PP videos. Mm -hmm. Chuck Berry, shout out. All right. Um, So, my ADD's off the chain right now. But what, 
what can we what did we miss last week that I know we talked for we talked for two hours after the podcast last yeah. week and we were like we should have kept the mics on but uh, we talked about how do you in how does this help with depression like I'll give for instance like they say if you're depressed get a dog mm-hmm. that will a that'll keep you on a schedule a lot of the time yeah and then b like just petting a dog for ten minutes lowers your blood pressure mm-hmm. lowers your, like a lot of anxiety is that are you finding any studies uh to kind of pull together as part of this marketing yeah there's uh, there's actually two studies just came out in the last two weeks kind of funny the source because one was a napkin company the other was a walnut company okay but the napkin company found that millennials actually feel guilty when they take a, a lunch break like the lunch break that they're entitled to they feel like they're lower performers they feel like there's this like un like unwritten shame. For yeah, there's always some break. brown noser working through lunch yeah. every day. Say that? Good. <laughs> yeah. Like Jocko. So, so taking that, there's some, there's a bunch of other studies out there that show that, uh, absenteeism is lessened. Uh, creativity is increased whenever you feel more connected to your coworkers and like what better, if you have an hour every day that you can go and just like get to know the people around you. I mean, it's the same reason why solitary confinement is another level of punishment for yeah. somebody in prison. Yeah. Like humans are supposed to be talking to other humans. Like you can't, very few people yeah. are okay in solitude. And just, I don't, I don't think you think of this app as it's going to replace, it's going to fix the situation. I think you, you're very realistic that it's a supplement no, to yeah. better mental health. I say that like we, we want to help enable frictionless lunching. So a lot of features to like make it easier just to schedule, but really all it is, is a, is an excuse to break the ice. It's like, uh, it's a, it's a, it's like Tinder helps you find people to date. Yeah. We help you find people in the office that are cool to get along with. Oh. And you're seeing this, you're seeing the, uh, as as you look at big apps like Bumble, they 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 do have another part to them now that mm. is for friends, which I don't that buy. No, what? I don't buy guys being friends with women through that app. But okay, well, I think it's girls too because I had an old boss. She found some like girlfriends through yeah Bumble BFF. And if uh, speaking of NPR and other podcasts, how this got built, there's a good one with the Bumble uh, creator who was at Tinder nice. and how that whole story. It's is crazy. Really like crazy. when you start. Projects like this, one of the this will be something else in five years. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, one of the early founders of Bumble, he he has another dating app for like over thirties, and he hit me up. He's on his way over. What's from it called? France. What's it called? What's it called? Put me on the spot. I can't Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I'm a Hinge guy anyway. Uh, um, crushing it on Hinge. No, uh, my thing is like, you don't. You're not. You know, you're very realistic in the goals of what you're trying to do with this startup. Yeah. I, I mean, I would say that we're half lifestyle brand, half tech company, because the lifestyle brand is like, if if the tech never takes off and we can just convince people like, hey, it's important to take a lunch break and take some time for yourself to either get to know people or if you're an introvert to like get to know yourself. Yeah. Then I'd say we won. Well, well, yeah. That side of it's nice and a fairly low bar. Or yeah. Like, it's like, all, all you got to do is meet somebody. Yeah. And if you don't want that, you know, then... I'm just curious, like, for somebody like me who mm-hmm. doesn't eat lunch, like, what would you He's sell keto. me on? He's going to talk to you about keto. But, but you I'm still talk about keto unless you want to talk about it. It's really good for you. Well, I'm it. kidding. Well, take, the, take the food element out of it. So on he gets that, so testy because he's, ke- he's a keto guy. Uh, on the app, we I have, have sugar you, can, you can choose the kind of lunch, and you can choose, like, a little emoji with it. So there's a shoe in there. So, like, maybe just walk around the building for a little bit. Like, just okay. take some time to yourself because it's, it's less about lunch. It's more about the lunch break. So, like, oh. an hour in the middle of your day where you stop the work you're doing, come back refreshed, and, like, just give yourself a little little bit of time. I'm curious so what the other emojis are. So, you got the shoes for to go into a walk. We and got then a plate. It's for, like, the regular food. Obviously. Uh, we have a coffee. All a right. Lunch pool, but with coffee. Uh, we have a birthday cake for, mm-hmm. like, anniversaries or birthday parties. Mm-hmm. And then beer mugs for, like, after work happy hours. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Th- yeah, we need. We've talked about the Maslow's hierarchy of needs and the business version of that. That the name escapes me. Uh, but there is a business version of that where you do need community. You need you need feedback that yeah. is pos- more probably p- more positive than negative. Like yeah. you can create that negative one where you go, "I'm a piece of shit." We do have this problem in our age range where because we're not doing as much manual labor, everything's kind of keyboard soft now. Yeah. You do feel like if you're not exerting the hours, mm-hmm. 
right? That you are softer than everybody else dude, in the office. I mean, dude, even if you're putting in those hours, I feel like it's the yeah, hours. Yeah, the quality. I feel like with with knowledge work, sometimes it's like you get a what lot of hours. So what knowledge, knowledge work is like. So I was on the business intelligence team over here in Evil Ward, Ashley. Yeah, you're powered by curious. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Weird. Bi. Yeah. But but. Sometimes you're doing work, but it doesn't feel like work because you're not like making a presentation or, you know, you're There's not doing tangible. something tangible. It's right. just knowledge work. It's right. like we had a discussion and we figured something out. Yep. So like that can drive you crazy. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's why there's workout equipment in here because it's like we're sitting on a keyboard. You could edit all day. I know. And that you don't feel good like physically. No. Right. Oh, like, no. I'll tell you, so the, the turning moment for me when I realized like this is what I want to do the rest of my life and like going into a little bit of motivational speaker mode um there's a ted talk i can't remember the guy's name but he talks about how the the opposite of addiction is not sobriety the opposite of addiction is connection and it's because whenever we feel isolated as humans we have that innate urge to attach to things Mm -hmm. and usually it's other people but if we don't attach to other people then we're attaching to our phones Mm -hmm. or porn or weed or whatever it may be or to bring a meta example if you're an aa yeah you're not supposed to be in a relationship in that first year. You're getting, you're going dry. Mm. They call that the thirteenth step mm. because you're filling a void with something else, and yeah. that can be. Ju- you're just basically replacing addiction with an addiction. Yeah, yeah. Right? back to just answering the real questions of what's going on. Right, which we would say, you know, AA aside, you, maybe you should do shrooms and figure out what what you really want. Yeah, well, knock I that a, shit out I tonight. I yeah. ask a spirit quest. Well, yeah. I mean, there's something to it. It's uh, it sounds like I'm being flippant about uh, doing shrooms when we talk about it on this podcast, but do it every now and again. You do need to have that time where you go to the forest, or it could just be a quiet spot at your house. You know, just yeah. shut it down, uh, and you do need to ask these questions every now and again to yourself. We're missing the self reflection part, I think, of of what we used to do. Yeah, and I think that it's sorry to cut you off, but it's um, it's connection. So, like, you know. Feelings on drugs or mushrooms aside, they say that one of the benefits of that is it makes you feel connected with the the universe. Yeah. And that disconnection is what we're battling these days because we we have devices that connect us together. Yeah. Or they say they do. Like our devices are connected together, but we feel so disconnected. Oh, we're the oh, yeah, shittiest we, communicators. Yeah. No, I mean it's like uh, the reason why MDMA is being prescribed for like PTSD mm. is not necessarily like the drugs effect on your memory of things or whatever, but it helps you to form a bond with whoever the counselor is that you're dealing with oh, wow. to further go into what it is. And for, uh, that connection in itself is what helps to rid you of the Makes you horrible pathetic, anxiety. Kind of? Uh, Makes you more uh, pathetic? Yeah. I, well, I mean, it's just, I don't It opens you up more to like, you you're not on your the defensive. Yeah. yeah. You know, exactly. It's a, you step outside of yourself. Um, it's it's important, man. I mean, we're, yeah, we're our own worst enemy in a lot of ways. Yeah, right. there, there's a lot human capacity. Almost everybody can be a lot better as far as I think you can get caught up and never really think about this stuff. Myself included. I'm that I'm a hypocrite as I'm giving advice, but that's a work in progress. If you I mean, can't teach, or if you can't do teach, right? And if you can't <laughs> teach, teach gym. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's it is that thing of like. No, but that that was the irony of um so our business name is Ignatius Riley Co. You ever seen you ever heard of the Confederacy of Dunces? Uh yeah, it was book. A, it's a book. It's one of the funniest books. Uh it's it was supposed to be made into a movie a bunch of times, I think, and it was like, yeah, cursed. Jo- John Candy, oh, Belushi, wow. Farley, they were all supposed to play it and before they were able to died. So it's been oh, around since the seventies. Yeah, nobody normal. wants to do it. If you you're in New Orleans, up. if you're new, if you if you're a New Orleans person, you know of this book because mm-hmm. it's about the reason our company name is that mm-hmm. is two reasons. What, one, I went to uh, Catholic high school, so I wanted people to think I love Catholicism because Ignatius Loyola. I'm gonna I'm listening to you, that? but I'm gonna go review Tokaboga while I'm listening. Thank you. Uh, and then number two is uh, Ignatius Riley. It's a it's about a loser that lives at his house with his mom. He's a 40-year-old fat oaf. He's only left New Orleans once, but he's the guy telling everybody around him what to do. Mm. And I thought that's a perfect kind of apropos metaphor for consulting or advising, <laughs> right? We can talk all this yeah. shit. We can tell everybody what to do, but if we're not taking the advice ourselves, we're, no. we're Here, just, here's, yeah. here's a textbook example of that. So, you know, you've read some of my blog posts. I have a pretty rich marketing background. 
I have this analogy that I'm obsessed with of the marketing mountain. I think we've talked about it on here before mm -hmm. where it's like there's it's not a sales funnel. It's actually a inverted funnel. It's a mountain and you have to get your prospects to the top, but they have to want to get up there and you're just their Sherpa. It's called kind of MLM. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's not a it's not a pyramid. It's an up yeah. Yeah. But but it's a mountain. I, but I wrote I've written blog articles. I've talked about this endlessly and one of my teammates on lunch pool, he's like Hey, I read your uh, marketing mountain thing. Have you done that for lunch pool? And I was like, Ooh, so got to eat my dog food. Yeah, we we are the same way. I thought <laughs> about it in the dog food. I, <laughs> that is like an old southern. Yeah, I got to yeah. eat my dog food I was in that one for one. It's good. I'm gonna use that. <laughs> um, I do think about that a lot lately, and so it's like, all right. And Eric's heard me ad nauseum kind of talk about like got to get our shit together it, it, for the show too. It's like we want this show to expand, and we can get. To we, it's hard when you get to a certain level and you get content, right? Mm -hmm. And you can't. It has to be the hedonistic treadmill where, you know, you get to a level and you're still not happy. There's no such thing as a plateau, right? And so it just keeps. Or the hedonistic stair master, I think they've updated it. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, it just keeps going, right? Yeah. That's why you see all these rich, famous, successful people. You're like, how are they so miserable still? Right. And it's like, oh, it's. It's a mindset of right. what you're doing right in this moment. It's right. not like you're not going to ever get to a point where you're like, oh, the flip, the switch has been flipped. I'm now a happy person. Right. I got everything I need. No, you're the same miserable prick you were before. It doesn't matter how much money you got. Right. It, Bill Belichick's an asshole. Right. <laughs> and he has like, the, he's the best coach in the NFL right. ever. Most, yeah, exactly. And he's going to go Saban, home. And, yeah. Another I mean, it's just, yeah. Those guys would be fucking horrible to have a beer with. It's just, yeah. It's just crazy. It's like you can do what you, you can get where you want to be without any of the other shit. Like you can just do it in, mentally with your, I mean, but not the, in a minute, but, but once I you bet, start. I bet their, in their lives, what it makes them content, like Nick Saban getting that next recruiting class. Right. Like he gets a boner for that. Yeah. And that's sad. He doesn't search for happiness. I think he searched for being satisfied. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big misnomer is I think people really focus on being happy as a shorthand way to say, like, I need to be happy. But what I think we really have to look at is like we're being work on being content, work yeah. on being I like, satisfied. Yeah. I like satisfied, content way better than happiness. Happy's never going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Really. How creepy would it have be? You You're happy seen, all the uh, time. My, yeah. My right. wife got me a book called. Um, she's German, so she's never going to be happy. Uh, well, she's super happy. I mean, really? she's married to me, so. No. <laughs> uh, she got me a book called Hector and the Pursuit of Happiness. Have you seen? It's a book and a movie. So good. You need to watch it. The Just, Pursuit of Happiness? Yeah. Was literally the. Hector. That was the title for he last one. Hector and the Search of Happiness. Okay. But it's, uh, I, like, you'll like it because there's a French lady in there and she's like, she's like, oh, really? uh, have you seen, uh, she's like. Is it Martin Colliard? He said, I'm looking for, for happiness. She goes, ah, oh, happiness. You are looking for happiness. <laughs> looking for uh, okay, happiness. we're in. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're, that's, <laughs> Sorry, that's, we're the, uh, that's our two minute warning. I need to I need to read it. this review for Toka Boga Consulting because that's kind of like one of the themes is reviews. And yeah, how you should review the things you like or altru altruistically just try to think of your friends doing their own thing. Yeah. This is what I've been trying to do, and I just do it without even any yeah. provoke. I've like, been doing that. Yeah, I've been trying to do that too because you guys are hustling and you deserve reviews or like the currency of the internet. So I wrote, I do not recommend doing business with this company. <laughs> Unless you really care about your product or service and really want to transform and amplify your business results to unheard of levels of performance. Yeah, if you could be, just change that first sentence, that'd yeah, yeah. be great. Yeah. Be, be Before the, the only thing that sees. Yeah. I be, do not recommend. Okay, that's all I need to hear. Count. <laughs> Beware. If you engage with them, you will have to figure out how to manage all the new business and growth they help you achieve. You've been warned. Who, awesome. who told they you to wrote copy? Hashtag yeah. girthy ROI. Um, but yeah, reviews are the currency. I like that. I'm writing that down. Um, well, let, where do we send everybody on Instagram? Let's lunch pool. Yep. Right. Uh, and then your Facebook page, very active as well. You're doing a lot of live, uh, live lunches, pretty much Monday through Friday, right? Yeah, exactly. We do, uh, we do live lunches. We do coffee breaks. We do, uh, we did an hour of me swimming around in the pool the other day, just taking a break. Whoa, I didn't, I didn't know it was getting Slow that. TV. I didn't know it's yeah. the sweat lodge. I didn't know Slow we're getting TV. sweaty about that. No, man. Yeah. No. And then we'll do one after this episode's over. We'll do another. Uh, hit like we did for brunch pool last week. Let's do mm -hmm. it. Yeah. What about my sweat equity? Sweat equity. Get it up. Five star sweat review. Equity. My sweat equity. Get a sentence on that my, review. My sweat equity. Subscribe. Spotify, iTunes, Facebook, LinkedIn, your mom's Walkman. 
MySpace. Where's equity? What about my sweat equity?